Hello, Leaky. We are here live on the red carpet for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling. Magomed is right there. Potter Moore is right beside them. And the first guests are beginning to arrive. The first is Faith who plays Modesty, one of the children in the Harry Potter films. Ezra Miller will be here, Eddie Redmayne will be here, Catherine Waterston, pretty much all of the cast except for Colin Farrell, J.K. Rowling, the producers, the Davids, and Lionel will all be coming through. The screams have erupted, and here we go. Ginormous world. I mean, kind of unbelievable because obviously, like, I had no idea it would be this big. I was just like, oh. like when I skipped through a couple of pages of the book, I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Like, just all the scenes and the content, it's just amazing. Like, how does JK come up with this stuff? <laughs> I never know. Uh, we wonder that too. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> you stood in line with millions of little girls too on, in London when they had an open casting call. So, do you want to talk about uh, how yeah. you got through that? Sure. Like, I was, it was a long, long process. Now, <laughs> uh, in most of the places, I was like sat with really nice girls and mm -hmm. stuff. So it was just really nice to talk to them and like see like how they started acting and stuff. And just like told them how I started. And just really nice because I was sat next to some really nice people. I remember in the second round, um, I was actually sat with this really nice girl, and um, she just told me how like she got into acting, and it was just really nice. Did you contact any of the, or have any contact with any of the Harry Potter stars to act, ask how they um, went through this when they were young, or did you have anyone give you any advice about it? Well, Ezra, you know, he, he, was, my, he was my bro from the start, you know, he was just, he was just like my help, he was just, like helping me like get into all of it. Had you read Harry Potter before? So you're familiar with the world? I started reading the first one, but I haven't actually read all the books. And I tried reading Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I just, 
commercials no mm -hmm. have you had anybody sign and ask you for a signature or anything yet? actually when I was on the plane uh, here um, um, I just started to cry because I was really scared because I've never been on such a long flight before and they just, um, came up to me and it was like hostess actually came up to me and was like oh it's okay do you want to meet the captain and I was just like okay and he was just like oh yeah why are you on this flight and stuff and I told him and uh, he was like wow that's amazing and he must have told me the hostesses and they were like they actually came up to me in the middle of the flight and they were just like would you mind signing this menu <laughs> and i actually signed it for some of their daughters and it was just really sweet would you mind hey. signing this book hey. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like filming a 1926 scenario in okay. new york city when you know the cars were so old the clothes were so old what was the, the sets and the costumes those are still amazing because you really thought you were there and it was just honestly like can't even imagine uh, what was it like acting with a bunch of adult actors that you probably know from culture modern culture and then jk rowling have you met her and what's it like working for her as well there you go. <laughs> thank you Okay. Thank you, Yeah, it was really amazing just to meet all of them. Like, yeah, I knew about Eddie Redmayne because, oh, I just love Les Mis. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, literally, um, I'm in drama class. Um, I go to this drama club, and they're literally like, how was it working with Eddie Redmayne? Like, that's amazing. And I said, it's really amazing. And she's like, oh my gosh, she's in Les Mis. It's amazing. <laughs> Name is is literally like if you haven't watched that in drama, yeah. mm -hmm. you're just like nothing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Did you meet Joe? Did you meet Joe Rowling? I haven't met her. This is gonna be my first time. Oh, are you nervous? <laughs> I don't <know> say. <laughs> just say hi. Like, thank you. Ask I love for you. a hug. Yeah. 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 yeah I love ask you. for a perfect. Yes, baby. Thank you, baby. Yeah. Thank, thank you very bye. much. No, that's me. You as well, and darling. Have fun tonight. <laughs> have fun tonight. Awkwardly holding a book and like a phone in one hand. Here's my pinky. She is adorable. She seems like just a regular girl. She is actually very mature for her age. My camera woman. Hello. Um, she plays a very young girl in the Fantastic Beasts films, as we know. She is Ezra Miller's adoptive sister, and uh, Mary Lou, who is a second Salemer, is her mother, her adoptive mother. And so Faith is a little girl who actually uh, sings really creepy anti-witch tales and songs as she hopscotches down the sidewalk. But she also, in subtle ways, finds uh, little methods of undermining her quote-unquote evil adoptive mother so she will throw away uh, second Salemer pamphlets that she's supposed to be handing out so we can tell that she she's very creepy but I think she's batting for the right team. This fandom as Joe has said has always been loving and giving and accepting and she hopes that they will be loving and accepting of this movie as well. Oh, we have a cute little Harry Potter family coming down the red carpet. This is gorgeous. <laughs> over here, over here. <laughs> oh, you're adorable. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. You look great. Hi, you guys Hi, look amazing. Can I wave your wand?
he's your he's your favorite character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Um, I don't really know any of the characters because I haven't read the, um, the um, Fantastic Beasts book. Okay, all right. These all these all your brother and sisters here. Yeah. You look guys look adorable. Adorable. You all look so great. You all look very good. Have fun, guys. Yeah. Have a good time. No, 
you're, you're the only person standing over here. She's done with Pottermore over there. Would she mind signing my book? I'm sure she will, yeah. I've <laughs> never met any of these people in her life before. It's a surreal moment for me. Um, see, so Eddie's back there. Joe's right there. Joe is right there. I just saw her in that light. I was like, this is we know that we know that Joe's like she's right there. But we know that she's always coming down the carpet. Yeah, we like, see Neil oh, first. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're like if her husband's there, then um, she's right behind. Eddie and Allison are right behind her. Right okay. Now. And we'll be at the party later. So oh, yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah. Okay. Good. Joe looks beautiful. I'm so glad that you guys watched. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, you were like, nice. and I was like, look at her. Look at her. Awesome. Oh, there she is. Yeah, Joe is right there. Dress. She looks. She's beautiful. amazing. She's always. She always looks amazing. She always looks amazing. She always looks amazing. <laughs> Joe is the. I know. It's a big piece out of the puzzle. There it is, done. It's going to get very, very crowded very fast, and we will try to bring you the best questions possible uh, with the cast and the crew. is very weak because we're in the middle of a, a, a tent and, and lots of lots of people, lots of people using data. Um, the tent itself blocks a little bit of... Hi, Chris. Hi, hey, Chris. Michael Jackson, I think. 
That's awesome. I would I'd put it Okay. In my You look beautiful, Joe. Amazing. Two questions. Two questions. Should I ask her about Grace? Can we ask her? Yeah, sure. About Grace and Monica. What happens to her? Sure. That might be a spoiler. Or I could ask her what her favorite scene was to write. One or something that she cut because there was drafts. Well, right. Mm -hmm. no, wait, no. So, favorite scene in which Everyone is freaking out, but yes, here's Joe. Two. Two, got him. Two, two, well, two each or just one? Two between us. You got you. Got you. Hi. Hi, Joe. Nikki Coulter. Hi. Right here. Hi. 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 Um, I would really cool. Sorry. Can you hold this for a hot second? Um, okay, so we want to ask one for all of the American fans. Why isn't it Mac USA? Why is it Macuza? Because it is. Because Macuza just sounds better. Than just does. Macuza. Macuza. I don't even think about it. I've been calling it Macuza for four years. Oh. And I just think it's kind of. It rolls off the tongue back. Macuza. Okay. I work at Macuza. Obviously, I do. What, uh, what job would you have if you worked at Macuza? I definitely would not be an aura because you have to be <laughs> physically pretty brave to do that stuff. Um, that's really depressing. Do you know, I wouldn't work at Macuza because if you're not an aura, you're no one. And I wouldn't be an aura. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a favorite scene that you enjoyed writing the most? There are, are a couple of scenes I really loved writing. Um, <laughs> I like the dinner. Have you seen the movie? I've seen the movie. Yes. Okay, so I like the awkward dinner when you first goes back to the girls' apartment. And everything in Newt's place is fun, obviously. Mm -hmm. And there are some scenes towards the end that are scary, but I like them. Did you cut yeah, anything? Yeah, scary stuff at the end. We can't say. We can't say. It was Thank amazing. The movie is great. Would you mind signing for us before you walk away? Oh, uh -huh. I know, it's been a long week. Oh, you are amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. We do. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so See you again. Yeah, we'll get the question to see you. Thanks for the hug. You look beautiful. Oh, Heyman is on his way over. Sorry. Better safe audience. How are you? How are you? Okay, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Again. Wrong hand. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> how are you? How are you? This is Troy Yes. Tell all of our viewers there watching why they should go see Princess. Oh, I'm fine. So I will say, uh, I think it's a ride. I think it's funny. I think it's moving. I think it'll make you laugh. I think it'll make you cry. I think we'll be on the edge of your seat. I think you'll be back in Joe Rogan's Whistling World. And you know that. You know it better than anybody. It's the most amazing world to be a part of. And uh, also, you know, these characters, you. Queenie, Tina and Jacob, they're not Harry, Ron and Hermione, but they really do feel in the same spirit of Harry, Ron and Hermione. They're all outsiders, they're lovely people, good people, trying to do the right thing. They come together in a way they create like Harry, Ron and Hermione. It's not, it's not the family you're born into, but the family you make. And um, you, Queenie, Tina and Jacob create a family. And I think just as you saw yourselves in Harry, Ron and Hermione, you'll see yourselves in, in, in these four. Um, it's a story about today, they go in 1926, and um, it's Joe Rowling. Joe Rowling wrote it. And, you know, somebody said, what can you say to people to reassure them at the press conference today? What can you say to people to reassure them? And what I thought I'd say, which nobody said, was Joe didn't need to do this. That was my question. She didn't need to do this. She 
desperate to do this. She was desperate to do this. She had a story to tell. Telling the story. Doesn't that make you feel safe and secure? Let's say I'm just going to be a really big fan. From your lips. From my lips to your bad ears, let's hope so. Five movies to take a long time but there's still a lot of untapped stuff. Do you think you would venture into a broader movie or book? If you were J.K. Rowling. You know what? I'm not Joe Rowling. I'm not Joe Rowling. And I would not presume to put myself in her head or her mind. Um, so Joe has stories to tell. She loves this world. Um, so I don't know what she would feel. But, you know, it's beyond this, I don't know what story, where she would go. But at the moment, I'm enjoying playing in the, in the world of Fantastic Beasts. I'm the luckiest man alive. You are. You are. I am. You are. I am. Also, um, we heard that production on movie two starts in January. No. 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 Nowhere okay. near. Are you taking a vacation first. Well, I, pre-production. I wish <laughs> pre-production may begin. We've begun production is sort of tentatively begun now in the sense that we are, you know, we're design looking at some sets or beginning to design some sets. We're working on the script, but it'll probably begin in proper January, February. And hopefully we'll start filming towards the end of July. Is, is the second script? Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. You don't know. Don't know yet. Is the script pretty polished off? Or no. So, no. Kind of, Joe's working on the second draft. Okay, second draft. Which is how many drafts and, do you think it'll still take? Well, I'd say there's a lot of drafts. <laughs> have you read it then? I have. Is it awesome? It, it, I think yeah. it is fantastic. I think. That <laughs> nice. I. A I no pun intended. Pun intended right. Well, boom. <laughs> I, it's terrible. Um, you know, I do. I think it's something the way the story develops and the way this connective tissue with to, to, to the Potter world and to the late of the books um, becomes more explicit. Tantalizing. Oh, does it? Yeah. I think this actually is a narrative release. There's a little bit of information here. Yeah. Yeah. That'll yeah. very much be that'll be very much the case here. Yes. Okay. That's what we saw, Great. That's what we saw so. in the first fantastic piece. We're certainly not gonna be able to tell the fans what we saw. But there's a narrative release that we can definitely see is gonna be bigger and better things yeah. come movie four and five. Yeah. Agree with that? Come movie two. Come movie two. Yeah. There'll be more, you know, there'll be little, little drip feed over the, I'll like tell you at the end of Bonnie, the film, Bonnie. Two, there's something pretty arresting. No. Hello. I'm good. I'm Catherine from the Leaky Cauldron, by the way. I would shake your hand. But I can't wait. That's okay. Hold on. Hold on. Actually, if you want to sign up real quick, that'd be awesome. Uh, have, yes. Have you seen the film? I haven't. I'm like super, super pumped to see it. I'm as in the dark as everyone else. As everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Creeping how's, it, how's it like to uh, see the dream team? Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Uh, so I, I like your film. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I like your film. Bonnie's just made. A, yeah, yeah, so her. Bonnie's just made a short film with Jake. She's she has no qualms about approaching her old partner. <laughs> no, you just gotta go up. She's them. she's really working it. She's you know what? She'll be a really yeah. yeah. She'll be she'll, she's a great director and a great producer. I've loved I've awesome. loved your short film. I love it. Truly, truly. Uh, will you be sticking to production and direction rather yeah, than acting? Yeah, at the moment mm -hmm. I am. Um, Spending all my time directing and writing, which has been really fun to really commit to that one. And you really enjoy discipline, it. which has been really nice. Yeah, um, but the moment, but you know, it, you they, know. So they inform each other so well that it's a nice balance of flitting between the two. And maybe I'll write a part of myself. I'll see who knows. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy the film. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
David Yates is making his way over. Um, he is the director of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. He is. It's okay. I get hugs from him. Did you? Oh, you did. I get hugs from him all the time. Yeah. Oh, mine was a joke. Uh, nice. We're going to get one of those later. A yeah. better one, not a A better one, because that was like a one-armed awkward hug, and I'm like one of full fledged. I'm so sorry about everything that's happened to you in your life. Here's some happiness. <laughs> this is for Jessica. She's going to be jazzed. Oh my god, that's perfect. All right, so... Of course I'm hey, David. for David. David too. You look amazing. Yeah, you do. Oh I love gosh. that. Oh my shoes. gosh, those shoes. Anyone see these shoes? They're beautiful. <laughs> those are amazing shoes. Oh, of course. Wow. It's gorgeous. How many of these have you done now? Like a dozen? <laughs> More a give or take. Do you, does it, is it fun every time? Do you enjoy them? Yeah. Do you like dressing up? You know? Yeah. I know, I got a dress for the occasion too because I like dressing up. I'm press and I wanted to dress up anyway. Yeah. So it was amazing. I uh, was rushing to get here though because they made us get here so early. So. Thank you. Thank you. I would say that they're really nice and fancy, but I think they're from Forever 21 and they're like $5. Even better. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> you heard it. So. This is amazing. talking to Pottermore, um, Ashley Muglet will get to, ta get to talk to him in a second. He directed uh, the last four Harry Potter films and this Fantastic Beast one. He is anticipating directing the next and the rest of the Fantastic Beast films, but as he said during the round tables, he's going to take it one movie at a time. You know, projects ten years out are hard to commit to because things happen. But um, Eddie is coming and Eddie and Dan are right behind David. Hi, David. So, we are live on Facebook with MuggleNet. And Leaky. Sorry. And Leaky Talk. Hello. Over here. Can you just tell everybody watching why they should go see Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? Oh, go see Fantastic Beasts and where to find them because it is. It shows world that moved on in a really exciting and interesting way. And I think only she could probably reset this world in the way that she has. It's very special. We're very excited about it. You've seen the movie? Yes, we yes. have. Yes. Yes. Like it. We, we loved the We loved it. Speaking on behalf of the family. I already said it's one of the top three movies I've ever seen. Oh, well, that's great. You can come again. Now, as you go more and more, you see more of that. You can pick up on things that I haven't seen before. Very, I can't wait to see it tonight. Me? With everyone? I've seen it for three weeks. I finished it three weeks ago. Three weeks, yeah. Yeah, literally. And so it's going to be great just to see it with lots of people. Absolutely. Yeah. The, it ended kind of quickly. Like, there was lots of very quick at scenes end, at the, the end. Yes, yeah. yeah. I love that final 15 minutes. So. Yeah, and they're all kind of dot, dot, dots. Mm -hmm. They're little dots. We yeah. like the dot, dot, dots. Because it, it will build them in the rest yeah, of the series. We build, yeah, so so we don't just leave modesty in a building, right? Does she? Does modesty ever come back? <laughs> modesty, um, currently she she will fleeting me. Oh, fleeting me. Yeah, yeah. I haven't told her. Yeah. I think she's. Yeah, we're thinking of putting her maybe just at the very beginning of of uh, the second one. Okay. Sort of we we left off with her. I just crouched in a, yeah. an abandoned building. Yes. And Do you know what? when we were doing all the recruit screenings, we show it to the audiences so they mm -hmm. can see it for the first time. It's so interesting. A lot of a lot of people said, or a significant minority said, what happened to modesty? What happened to the little girl? Like, we're, we're, we're concerned about her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, and you know, 
What's your first venture in that zone? It's a very underutilized period. Mm -hmm. you know, there aren't that many movies set in this period, and it's so rich. The 1920s. You know, the 1920s are fantastic. Yeah. It's the jazz age. The jazz age in Europe in that period was great. So it's a, it, for, my, for me and my design team and Stuart Craig and all the guys who put the world together, it was, uh, it was like Christmas. Was it like modernizing Harry Potter because Harry Potter felt very medieval in all the castles and things? You're right, you're right. Yeah. And when I was making it, I never thought I was making a period movie. It felt oddly more contemporary than Potter did. Yeah. And that's a really strange Because everything feeling. comes back around. Yeah, yeah. everything comes back around. Stuart Craig did such a great job at building How many yeah. cars did you bring over from America? Oh gosh, I lost hands. We just have had. <laughs> Those are such good cars. Yeah, great cars. We've still, we still got them. We've still got them. Yeah, we've still got them. We bought them back. I can't remember. Tim Lewis, the live producer, so you have to ask him. But we, okay. yeah, they were lovely. But when they all fired up, yeah. all at once, Man, that uh was toxic. <laughs> it was. Petrol. <laughs> it was not good. Would right. you guys mind so signing real fast for you? Yeah, um, enjoy the enjoy the film. Oh, thanks, guys. Have a good. Anywhere. Do you have a favorite beast? My favorite beast is Frank the Thunderbird. Oh, Frank, Frank the Thunderbird. Love Frank. Love Frank. Thank you so thanks, much, David. David. Okay. Waterstone is awesome. If you haven't seen Grace and Frankie, Ron. Ron. Hey. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you guys? Great. How are you? Vicky Cauldron. Nice to meet you guys. Good. Uh, the Madam President. Hey, how are you? Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. Nice to see you. So we're live on Facebook. Hey, guys. This is our first time meeting the MuggleNet crowd. Hey, MuggleNet crowd. How are we? We've been around 17 years and we've been really excited to meet you. Well, it's so lovely to meet you guys and thanks for being so um, so supportive to us through this process because as fans of the film and as rookies in the uh, we didn't want to be in the once this much that came in and it up. So do thank you for at least willing us on waiting to see the movie before you make a decision. Uh, we loved it. Oh, we loved it. Yeah. Absolutely oh, amazing. You. And I wanted to talk to you about you because I haven't connected with a character. And I'm getting tears in your eyes. Oh, if you're about to, I think I'm about to cry. Other than Newt being a really long time, I think that he is so compassionate and caring. And even if he is a little prickly, you know, awkward, I, I, that first time you go into the case, I just felt myself getting all cleansed and teary. And I want to hear from you about Chesky. What part of you is in there and what have you taken from you so far? And what is it like to play somebody like that? He's the Hufflepuff and the hero of the world needs right now. And I'm a Hufflepuff too, by the way. Oh, good. Yes, there's a lot of Hufflepuffs watching. Nice. Very happy. Inside of the Hufflepuff, I have a four and a half buckle oh. daughter who I put in a Hufflepuff scarf. Oh, and so I take photos of the Hufflepuff in it. Uh, so she is an official Hufflepuff. So, uh, uh, thank you for being so kind. That makes me feel very well. I love this character, the amazing thing, and I can't wait for you guys to be scripted the film because there is so much description in it. It's really the character is so beautiful. It actually was all there. There were elements, what I loved about you is you as well, kind of aspired to be in some ways. There's a moment where he says to the dance character that worried me is you so much twice. Yeah, that was my yeah, favorite quote oh. from the entire movie. I'm the biggest warrior in the world. The going to start. So we just got to do one question. One question. So are you going to run away? With the leaky culture in it, oh. we've been around for ages yes, as well. No, I don't I mean to rush you, but the premiere is going to start. We're yes. going everywhere. One last question. Um, Tina eventually becomes your wife. Is there a moment in this film where you absolutely just falls in love with her? Do you know, there are... It's a moment when he sees. I think there are various little moments. Like charting that was quite important. In response to vulnerable people, to vulnerable creatures, really, and, and, and he responded to her when she he sees her sort of attacked him. When he sees her love for the creatures as well, and certainly with Jacob as well, that's kind of when he realizes he can open himself. But there was one scene which isn't in the film, which is when the two 
girls sing the, hopefully it'll be in the DVD extra, yeah, two yeah. good girls sing the Elk Morning song, and I understand all the reasons why it could be in the film, but the two of us would sit down and watch them sing, and like you see new kind of falling into Tina, and you see Dan, I totally in love with Alison's character, and it was, um, so I think there will be more. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks. One here for us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Nikki Cauldron. Nikki Cauldron. Nikki Cauldron. We love you. The fans love you as well, yeah. We're done. You're our last one. Okay, so we will see you in there. Thank you. Are you excited? High five. High five to the people. High five to the people. Thanks, Dan. Ow! Thanks, Dan. See you later. Hi Carmen. Hi Carmen. Just wait. Hi. Carmen plays um, President Serafima in the film. Just a lot of the friends. So hi. Just wave at the fans. Can you sign? Can you sign? Can you sign? Can you sign? Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I'm not sick. Over. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Any encouragement for fans? Uh, we love you. We love you. We love you too. Bye guys, thanks for watching, hope we made you proud.